You are a FileMaker developer and you're curious about ChatGPT and you wonder what you can do with it. Well, let's try a very simple experiment. If you open up the ChatGPT window, I type this code. Can you write a FileMaker script? And it said, yes, I can write script code. And so I made a simple request. I said, write a script that creates a record in the invoice table for a given company. Very, very small amount of code. It did it, it looks correct. Then I asked for something more difficult. I said, write a script that searches for data in four tables, company, person, invoice, phone. And it then um, runs that script from a search in one field so it works kind of like Google. And it wrote this code. This is kind of the beginnings of FM search results. Weirdly, it actually even names the layout search results. Um, so I kind of knew what I was asking for here uh, and kind of what I was going for. And the purpose of this was not to see how perfect it would write from the very beginning, but it's to see what it would do as we go through and iterate it. So let's watch. So the first code that it has here is these four tables. It looks like it would actually get the results, but it's only giving me the count of records and the first ID. So I made a correction. Um, I said, you shouldn't really ever use the perform find command with the restore feature. It said, yeah, you're right. That's generally a good idea. I told it how to do it better, and it immediately changed it. So it used uh, my preferred method of go to layout, um, expressly setting the field and doing perform find. Um, OK, then I said, um, For simplicity, let's just look in two tables. So it reduced the script length to make it simpler. And then I said, okay, well, after you do a find, uh, I had more details of what I want. I, I called out that it was only giving me the first record, uh, not the multiple keys, and made some other changes and told it kind of where I was going with uh, wanting JSON at the end. So it says, okay, well, now for each table of a search, um, it uh, finds and does a loop and then grabs all the IDs. It's using a method that I don't really prefer to set the each key. Um, so let's talk about that in a second. But the code basically looks right. Okay, so then I said, <laughs> um, before the loop, there's no need to clear that variable. So I asked it to delete a line of code that I didn't think was necessary and made a couple of other changes. Um, and so it also added code lines for me, which I asked for, which I thought was just amazing um, that it did that. And that way I can refer to specific lines of code that says, you know, this line of code looks right, that line of code looks wrong. So I'm training it. My thought is that by me training Chatbot to write better FileMaker code, that the whole FileMaker community can benefit. Um, so if all of us together are using this for this purpose, it's going to get better at better in writing FileMaker code. That's at least my thought from what Christopher Light tells me, and he never lies. OK, um, so now we're getting much closer, right? So we get our find. Now it loops through and uses um, uh, my preferred method. Oh, it's still not actually doing that. It's still using the, the setting of the field to or the variable to the new record and then a, a paragraph mark and the next one. So I think in the next iteration, I ask it to use the list function instead. And then here it's now using the list function to create a return separated list of keys uh, for each table that it finds data in. So we're getting there, right? So then I say, uh, this is really good, but I um, want one that creates JSON and at the, at the end, so it actually sets JSON. And then at the very end, it used this interesting method to set JSON. It didn't use the JSON set parameter. It actually looks like this would work, and it's pretty brief. But I'm more familiar with JSON set parameter, so I asked it to use that. It rewrote the code using that method. And this looks pretty finished to me for what this will do. So I said, OK, well, what would the example be if I generate um, uh, test data out of this? And so it, this is the JSON that it was result. This would definitely be correct. It would be the primary keys for two different tables of data that I could then use in another script to, to go get that. This took just a few minutes to do. And I think all of you should go play with this tool because it's really fun to use.